for the great work he does in this city day in and day out as the president of your labor party. I think you know this better than I, that there's nobody better than John in regard to the work that goes on day in and day out in the city to represent working people. And more importantly, wherever there's a struggle in this city, he's there to support his affiliate 100% to ensure that this city knows this is a union town and we are not going to concede our role in this city. as we are talking about the most important election in the city in a long time. I can't tell you what, how important it is to be with you because we've all got a lot of work to do. I'm not simply here to make a speech because I also live in the city, like many of you. I live here on the weekends when I'm able to get home. I'm here in the streets of Toronto, but I'm also at many of the events that you're at on a regular basis. And the reason I, I come here tonight because I share some of the feelings we have about our city and the challenges we see ahead of us given we've got about three weeks before we have the elections. I want to thank all of your affiliates, and you and your locals, for the work and for getting you out here tonight. I know if you're looking at the polls, you may have some questions of where we're going to be on election night. But by God, if polls any indication about some of the victory that has happened, kicking Tim Hudak's ass in the last election, Day and making sure we convince every single worker, family members, and friends and neighbor that can vote to ensure we have the outcome we deserve in the city we kind of want to live in in Toronto. So, sisters and brothers, the municipal work that's going on in this city is going right across this province, and the Congress has invested an enormous amount of resources because we recognize fundamentally is where our members live, and more importantly, at the municipal level, we need to elect politicians who represents our values, who are going to stand with us and fight with us and defend the things that's important to working people. In Ontario, right across this province, Labour Council are doing exactly what you're doing here in large and small gatherings, working on the municipal election to ensure when October comes on election day, we've got all our members engaged and participating so we can elect more friends at City Hall. As a result of the work that Congress is doing, to date, we've elected over 1,500 mayors, City Council and School Board Trustee right across this country in the Municipality Matters Campaign. <laughs> this year, as we are championing the municipal work here in Ontario, we're doing it in PEI, we're doing it in British Columbia, we're also doing it in Winnipeg. And I'm hoping an, an election night in those cities will have equally as good results that we will have in the City of Toronto because working people understand what's the state. Sisters and brothers, many of us are in this room who share some of the ambivalent feelings we have. You know friends and family members who live in this city, who go to work day in and day out and still live in poverty. You know the, the brother or the sister or the neighbor who works at three jobs who still can't make it ends meet. You know the person who always had a part-time job, and a temporary job or a casual job, trying to figure out how they want to survive. These are not strangers. These are our friends. These are our family members. These are our neighbors. A city as rich as ours, it has such disparity. If you walk a couple of boxes down the streets here, on Bay Streets, where there's so much wealth is generated every single day, and we've got so many in this city living in poverty. This election is about us equalizing the relationship, about the commitment of the city to create a good, decent job for working people who want to work. Fighting, of course, for a hundred and something years, our labor council has been in the cities. About the accomplishment we have had, when people said it couldn't be done, it was our labor council work in this city that talked about public health back in the 19th century. It was the labor council of this city that talked about a fair wage policy that's been around for a hundred years. It's the labor council in this city that talked about making public transit, of course, a public service. And by God, let's not trust any right-wing politicians who tell us they support public transit because the minute they get in there, they'll privatize the 
we can never allow that to happen. Right. This later comes to, by the way, it has led the way to fight to say we want the joint to joint to deal with human rights and equality in this city, to ensure that all of us can live side by side in harmony, respecting our values, recognize what we bring and we commit to this city on a day in and day out basis. And talk about social service. Is this Labor Council led the fight to talk about good and social services and affordable housing? Something that some of us take for granted. I don't want to go on to some butter, but I also want to talk about the work all of you did in the last election. You know, for two years, Tim Hudak tormented us. Tell us what he's going to do when he become, became the, the premier of our province. He was going to bring in right to work. And of course, his last, of course, pronouncement before the election was going to get rid of 100,000 public sector jobs. We didn't allow that right-wing asshole to win because we understood what it was like to stand beside each other, union after union, working together with the Federation and the Labor Council, work with the CLC and the Spearness campaign to talk to our members what's at stake in the province of Ontario should Tim Huda get elected. And by God, we show them we can stop right-wing politicians who want to take us back. You did not work, Mr. Speaker. You did not work. What's at stake here? In 2015, less than a year from now, we're going to go to the polls in the federal election. And there's a man named Stephen Harper and his government would like to get another majority so he can finish the job and destroy the values of our country. Do we want somebody in City Hall? We're going to stand side by side, try to implement an agenda, or do you want a progressive like Olivia Chow to stand here to represent the to work with people? What's the stake here is far too great for us as working people. We can't allow the Conservatives to have a little bit nicer and a little bit gentler Conservative to occupy City Hall. Because the agenda would not change. All of us know right now and are embarrassed about the buffoon who runs our city hall. My God, I talk to the world and people ask me now, Sam, where, where, which part of Canada you live in? And I'm hesitant to say I live in this city because I'm so embarrassed. Never been my entire life growing up in this city so embarrassed for the politicians can make all run for cover, want to put a paper bag over her head because he's such a perverse individual in terms of what he represents. But this is I can go on about Rob Ford, but it's not worth my time. I'm here tonight to say to all of you that we have an opportunity in the upcoming municipal election in our city to elect more progressive councillors at City Hall who are going to stand up day in and day out to fight for the things we represent as working people. Our values. You know when the great ice storm came in our city, who was there? Restoring hydro to those houses in the middle of winter? are there providing the great public service we all rely on working families, but it's library service. My daughter learned to swim, she's six years old. I'm so proud because the QP member who provide that service and who taught her to be a swimmer. <laughs> the first responders you know when a family member have a heart attack there's a fire in the city. Who shows up first? It's our firefighters, sisters and brothers. It's the first responders and paramedic. Those are our friends. Those are our neighbors. Those are the people we want to defend. <laughs> for the great library that exists in the city that my daughter goes to, because why? Because they insist that she has to understand just because her father may have a little bit of resource, she's not going to have every book she wants in the household. She needs to learn to lose a public library because that's the important part of building communities across the city. been threatened because we've got a politician who tell us we can't do better. Sisters, you know and I know we can do better. We're capable of doing better and by God we'll do better when the election comes because of the work we're going to commit. So let me conclude to say to all of you, Olivia Chow is one of us. She represents our values. Many of you know her for the many years she spent in City Hall fighting for working people day in and day out, defending our cause, standing up because she knew where she stand. She came to this country like I did, as an immigrant. 
and is proud of her heritage. By God, and she helped make this city a great place for all of us to live in because of her conviction. She went to Ottawa with her husband, Jack Layton. When Hawk, Stephen Harper decided to legislate postal workers back to work, when the NDP was the official opposition, their first act, she stood there with her husband side by side, defending those workers, says, to hell with you, we're going to fill them up to your legislation. Commons arguing about why we need the city's agenda, and why we need to fund it. The tax system of our country is flawed. Lady Chow has been there fighting to say we need a better arrangement between our federal government and our cities. She represents our value. She represents our hope and aspiration. She is one of us. I know some of you are ambivalent about the polls, and it's important for me to say, if you look at polls over the many years, and look at some of the things that have happened despite what the poll tells us, we have never elected the NDP as the official opposition in Ottawa in the last election. Yeah. <laughs> brothers, I want you to enforce what many other speakers will say here tonight. This is our moment to fight for a city we want. This is our moment to elect some great city councillors who have been there and elect others so we can have a majority of city council, so we can defend the values of working people in the city day in and day out. And this is our opportunity to elect people to the school board for our public school system, where my daughters go, that I'm so proud of. Because we need advocates, a school trustees who are going to defend the public system. I want to conclude to say to all of you, there's not a hard work ahead. What that requires is you take the conversation back into your workplace, to talk to your friends, and to your co-workers, and into your families, and into your neighbors. I know we can make this happen. I know we can elect, elect Olivia Chow, but equally so, electing her is not good enough. We need to also to ensure that we've got more progressive at City Hall, so she will have the support she needs to carry out the agenda on behalf of working people. <laughs> so I want to say that thank you. I will do everything I can to continue to support my friend John Cartwright and his executive of this Labour Council to ensure they have the resources and the support to ensure on election day in this city, I will be with you there knocking on doors on election day. I will be back in my city, in my community, trying to get my good friend Morris Burke re-elected as my city councillor. Because I value the work he does day in and day out in City Hall. But more importantly, I need not to leave here tonight feeling cynical or jaded. We can't win this. By God, this is for us to win. The last thing we want is another friendly conservative in that city hall kicking the shit out of us, but just doing it a little bit nicer. I know we can do this. We can elect Olivia Chow as our mayor. With your support, I know we're going to win. Thank you, sisters and brothers.